Okay, now we have uh, the second plenary section of this uh, afternoon section. And I have a great pleasure to announce you Serge Mordon. He is from the French Institute of Health Med and Medical Research. And uh, he's one of those scientists uh, that, uh, like many others, are very worried about proving principles, but then transform principles uh, in prototype that can show how appliable they are. And he's been a very important uh, person in the development of uh, instrumentation for many of the biophotonics we do. And I'm sure that uh, he's going to give us a, a very nice talk about, uh, I guess, a collection of things related to his work. So I uh, hope the computer will, yeah. okay. Okay, so uh, please search you have your time for the presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to, to thank the, the organizer, Professor Bagnato, Professor Kourashi, and uh, also the IPA board, uh, to give me the opportunity to, to share with you some uh, results, recent results we obtained in my lab in Lille. So, uh, as uh, was said, be, uh, uh, my lab belongs to the French National Institute of Health, but is located at the Lille University Hospital, which is a huge hospital in France. So uh, my talk today will be the presentation of a new system we, we develop uh, uh, to, to perform mostly uh, treatment in dermatology, but we have also some other application. And so uh, LEF are the fact, light emitting fabric. So it's a teamwork and uh, different people are involved in that work uh, in my lab and also we have a collaboration. So uh, why the reason we, we start developing this light emitting fabric? Uh, as you know, and in Europe, uh, the treatment of uh, actinic keratosis using uh, uh, LA or uh, methyl LA is, uh, is popular and uh, it's an effective uh, therapy uh, but uh, due to the complex uh, cities of uh, human anatomy it's uh, practically impossible to obtain a reproducible irradiance and then uh, how it works yeah you can see that uh, it's very, if you, you get some high radiance here at the center, when you use the conventional system, which uh, LED panel, it's very difficult to, to obtain homogeneous uh, light delivery. So uh, the idea was really the development of flexible light source uh, to offer an interesting alternative to the conventional illuminator. And uh, usually it's a LED panel. Uh, and this light emitting fabric uh, offer the possibility to, to fulfill most requirement of uh, PDT in dermatology. So I think you are familiar with uh, fibers and if you are in, uh, you're in PDT and you, you want to perform interstitial uh, PDT, usually we use a light uh, and, and fibers, and we use side emitting optical fibers. That means we put light on one, one side, and you are able to get light on the other side. When you want to develop a light emitting fabric, you need what we call side emitting optical fiber, and not distal end emitting optical fiber. That means the light is able to uh, go through the and uh, to, through the cladding, uh, and you are emission along the fiber. So that's a possibility to uh, develop such a flexible system. Another possibility is in fact to bend the fiber and uh, for uh, people familiar with uh, optical fibers we know that uh, there is a kind of critical, and, uh, critical angle and if you bend uh, the fiber to uh, an angle which is uh, uh, greater than it to, to its uh, um, critical angle, you, you will have some escaping light. So we use this property to develop 
in fact, uh, our uh, light emitting fabric. And the idea is to get a bending angle uh, greater than the critical angle. And a side emission effect is created by leaking uh, some light from uh, the fiber core. So I go very quickly uh, for the mathematics, but based uh, on the, this angle, this bending angle, you can get a very uh, limited uh, escape of, uh, escaping of light, or if you bend to a very small, uh, ang uh, and very small radius to very uh, high angle, you can uh, obtain a, a lot of uh, light emission on a very short distance. So just to summarize, if you put some light on one side of uh, these uh, fibers where you, you have uh, created some micro-banding, so based on the angle of this micro-banding, some light will be able to escape. So in that case, a uh, very short radius. In that case, a very long, uh, great uh, radius. And so if I put light on one side, the light will be able to escape along the fibers. So that means a lot of light just at the beginning of, uh, of the, the fiber. But when I move along the fiber, there is less than light, which could be a problem because I need to have uh, homogeneous emission uh, on the, along the f this distance. So the idea is, in fact, very simple, is to uh, put light on each side. So if I put light on one side, I will get this light distribution. But if I connect the light on the other side, so I can get some addition of emission. And at the end, I'm able to get that. So that's the main principle, and this, is, uh, this approach is now patented, and uh, we, we develop uh, the technology to obtain these uh, things. So the idea is the following. Uh, we have uh, some tex uh, textile thread to, to obtain, in fact, the, uh, the banding of the fiber. This is the fiber. So we have a light source on each, uh, each side and uh, then light is able to escape that way due to the bending of the fiber. So originally, we, we started uh, three years ago. It was, a very, uh, it was really a prototype with uh, manual weaving. We use, in fact, the weaving. It's really based on the, the textile industry and the north of France where uh, Liz is located is uh, very famous for uh, textile industry. And even Lille in the 19th century was the capital of wool, which is no more the case. And uh, that was the original system we developed. You can see the fibers, and you can see, uh, in fact, uh, the, the warp, which are in polyester. Now we we are able to, to use uh, uh, it's a very low speed uh, automatic weaving machine. That means it's quite easy now to, to obtain this light emitting fabric. So that's the technology which is used. Uh, we can manufacture uh, kilometers of them in, uh, in a day, which is not a problem. So what, and it was uh, published recently, we, we perform a lot of uh, uh, evaluation about the homogeneity of uh, the fabric. Uh, we were concerned about uh, some increase of temperature to, to losses. And we can use high radiance uh, even up to 50 milliwatt per square centimeter without any uh, light, uh, any temperature increase, which could be a, a problem. So uh, we have also the technology to, to manufacture very large uh, size, uh, sizes, which is not uh, an issue. Uh, but for this, uh, for this given example, 
where we, uh, for to get this uh, surface, so it's 22 by 22 centimeter, uh, nine inches by nine inches, uh, we have something like 1.7 kilometer of fiber inside. So the, the system, the light emitting fabric uh, is very flexible and it's important to, to make a very clear distinction between micro-banding, which is necessary to obtain, in fact, the emission of light, and macro-banding, that means if the angle is like that, the, the homogeneity remains the same. So the, there is no, in fact, modification since here the angle and, you know, the radius is much, much, much larger than, in fact, the small banding, micro-banding inside the, the textile. So, since we use fibers, uh, we can easily connect this light emitting fabric to any light source. So, you have the example with blue light, green light, red light, and even white light, which is not uh, an issue. Uh, in that case, in fact, the white is obtained by the red, the blue, and, and the green. <laughs> but uh, we could also connect uh, to uh, a white light uh, source. So now this system, maybe I can just, uh, stop just for a short while to show you one system. Uh, so you can, can see I can band the, the, the flag, you know, the light emitting fabric, you know, you see it works, it's portable. In that case, it's a, just for demo, you know, for, for, for meeting, we get only five milliwatt per square centimeter. But, uh, I mean, everything is in the box, the laser and the battery and so on. Uh, so, um, the, the light emitting fabric now is in clinical evaluation. So, I will, be, I will give you some brief information uh, due to the fact that late this afternoon, uh, one of our resident uh, in dermatology, uh, Claire Vicentini, will give more detail about the protocol. And uh, in fact, this protocol was approved by the French government and uh, that we call ANSM, and, uh, and the protocol is, is called Flexi Light. That's an example with blue light, also or violet light. Okay. Um, so the idea was uh, and is to compare, in fact, the conventional uh, LED panel to our flexible um, uh, light source, to a light emitting fabric. And, uh, okay, again, I don't want to go too deep in the details, but we, in fact, we perform the evaluation the, on the same patient, one half with the light emitting fabric, one half with uh, the conventional LED panel. Uh, the main hypothesis is that flexi light provides at least similar efficiency than the classical PDT. Uh, in order, but with less pain, which is an issue and uh, sh should be much more comfortable and, uh, and so on. Uh, so, based on the uh, statistics, uh, 42 patients uh, must be included, and after randomization, each patient is treated uh, by the two techniques, one side uh, with one, and the final results are expected by the end of this year. And again, I uh, told that already, that the preliminary results uh, will be presented uh, uh, later this afternoon. So I have uh, some uh, video. I mean, it appears to be quite. I don't want to show you the, 
the entire video, but just to, to show you the example of a typical patient where we apply first the, the cream and that the, the prototype uh, for the evaluation, but for some reason it doesn't work uh, very well with that computer, so it's better to to switch off this video. If you are interested, I, I will have on my computer with good resolution. I will be pleased to show you. So the future uh, light emitting fabric could be very soon proposed to deliver ambulatory photodynamic therapy. And uh, we got some uh, funding from uh, EC, European community. Uh, so we work now on that system. And this is an example of a you know, portable uh, system. So it will be for actinic keratosis, mostly is on the, on the scalp. We are working now on a kind of an helmet where the light emitting fabric and the light source will be integrated inside the helmet. And We'll, uh, in the belt here will be the battery just to, to operate the system. Uh, so, as I told you, this work is supported by uh, our institution, the INSERM, uh, the French government, and the European Commission. So, uh, as you know, or maybe you don't know, uh, our team and my, my team is deeply involved in PDT for several years. And uh, we have uh, several communication, not only on, in dermatology, but also in neurology, uh, in gynecology, and also in pneumology, and uh, also some poster about uh, uh, no uh, glioblastoma treatment and so on, which is a very important program in Lille. And we have a uh, neurosurgeon and a huge team involved in the treatment of glioblastoma. So also one announcement, uh, maybe some of you are familiar with the Brixen meeting. So the Brixen meeting is over. And uh, I think we have some, we have to, to mention uh, some thoughts and uh, Professor Julio Jory, which was the founder of this meeting. It was decided that the next meeting will be uh, We'll, uh, we will take place in Nancy next year, so you are welcome in Nancy. It's a nice city uh, in the east part of France. And uh, obrigado. Okay, so thank you very much for the nice presentation. We have time for questions, so please. Okay, uh, th th thank you for the talk. I wanted to ask, what's the um, intensity of light you're delivering in ambulatory PDT? And related question, what, what was the basis for expecting reduced pain? Uh, at the moment, uh, we use 12 milliwatt per square centimeter. Fine, and, and so the basis for re expecting your hypothesis of reduced pain is that you're using a lower light intensity than in conventional PDT. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay, but you know, uh, we use the same fluence, but due to the fact that it's a uh, it could be a portable system, we can extend uh, the, the duration of the treatment. So that means instead of nine minutes, because the, to, to me it's a crazy treatment, I mean to, to use 70 milliwatt per square centimeter for nine, uh, nine mi minutes to deliver 37 joule per square centimeter. It's, I mean, crazy. So uh, the idea is to, in fact, reduce the irradiance, increase the du uh, treatment duration to get the same results. So we, we have already results. So I can tell you the efficiency is at least similar, even sometimes better, 
but uh, the pen is almost zero. Now the, the mean and the data will be, gi uh, will be given by Claire uh, is 0 0.6 or 0 0.8 compared to uh, 7 on a 0 to 10 uh, pen scale. V. Yes, indeed. So, so we've also done ambulatory PDT at lower intensities and get, get much lower pain, so it's certainly a good approach. Any more questions? Yes, Moises. Um, in this application, you want the light to spread over a large surface, but uh, maybe you have other situations in which you would like to conduct it from one point to another over a surface. And for that purpose, you can also use bending and use uh, what are called whispering gallery modes, resonances. Maybe that would be an application where you want to conduct the light over a surface, but along some curved surface to another point. Okay, thank you for uh, all this comment. Questions? I have one. I remember some time ago, people tried to do a phototherapy for neo newborn babies using fibers on the, on the bed. And for some reason that didn't work out. They found many different problems when you have contact, when that kind of thing. So my worry is, is that a worry here? Do you have any evidences that having the contact and everything may not be a good thing? Uh, no, I, I know, and we work also on that, uh, on that development for Billy Rubin and uh, yeah. baby John Dice. Yes, but in fact, uh, now on the market, you have GF care. Uh, they, s they are selling a system called Billysoft for many years. So it's a kind of what they call the light blanket. So the yeah, baby are blanket. in contact, and it seems it, it works fine. Works fine. So uh, it seems at the moment, and uh, I know that uh, several companies, we have um, even uh, one in France, we, uh, which is involved in the development of this kind of uh, light blanket or light uh, kind of fabric. To, to perform the treatment, which uh, seems to be uh, a maybe a good option for this baby John dies. Now, there's the second question. We realize that new devices for a PDT has to fit into the economic reality, whatever it is. So a device like this, the patient has to buy or you provide, and then he uses, and then you recycle for the next or something. That's a good question. In fact, it depends on each country. Uh, about the reimbursement and uh, the business model has to be defined uh, all the time. So, but we know that we, uh, we are concerned, you, you, and I thank you for that, you know, I'm involved in the development of medical device for 35 years now. So I developed system for laser, uh, originally for dermatology, which were sold worldwide and by all the laser companies. So we have this expertise in Lille and uh, also in INSERM. And uh, I think since at, at the beginning of the development, it was in our mind to find a good way uh, because you know, the idea is to treat real patient, okay, uh, in real life, uh, in the real economy. So we have to consider this point. And okay. okay, so before we thank Sarah for the nice talk,